After consulting with Mark regarding changelings and asking the right questions for the monster, I had a meeting with Zane today and I think it was pretty productive. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Distant Signal, everybody, and to another video. This is the 16th entry into the Changelings 90-day vlog marathon in the run-up to the crowdfunding campaign, which will begin on April 21st. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about the creature. I know we've kind of been harping on it a little bit, but it is the most complex aspect of the short. And so all of my meetings and uh, research has, have been structured around that uh, as of late, especially the last week. And after talking with Mark last night, I realized I needed to go a lot further and think more deeply about the creature and how it operates in everyday life and how we're going to achieve the transformation. I've sent him some information. Hopefully he's able to, uh, you know, root out a special effects supervisor who'd be willing to come on board the Changelings team. In lieu of that, I met with Zane today. Uh, he is a special effects artist as well, and he's come on board early to help me brainstorm and come up with some ideas on how to achieve the necessary and desired effects for the Changelings creature transformation. The conversation really centered around a couple of key points. One, we need to fit a lot of special effects and high quality special effects into a budget that's extremely tiny. We discussed sunburns and how we would achieve the desired effect of skin peeling or boiling or sloughing off. We discussed how we would achieve, say, melting or shattering limbs using gelatin molds. We even discussed if it were possible to, say, use photogrammetry to create three-dimensional scans of our actors for potentially marrying the special effects with visual effects, but also to create latex molds from our actors. And so we thought maybe we do a photogrammetry scan, which is taking a series of photographs and then stitching those photographs together in a three-dimensional program. We thought that maybe we could take that to a print house, print up a life-size version of our actors' heads, and then keep replicating latex molds off of that. Zane is a young special effects artist. I'm a neophyte. So it, there's a chance that we might have to do the molds more than once. And I don't really want to have to have our actors sit in the chair uh, you know, two or three times while we get everything right. Theoretically, we would practice on, say, myself or Zane, but being as inexperienced as I am, I know that we'd screw it up. So Zane floated the idea of using stop motion to create some very strange and maybe energetic tentacle effects for the transformation. So I'm not sure if that's a, a technique we're going to pursue. Zane and I are definitely on the same wavelength when it comes to using lighting and using camera technique to hide what we don't want the audience to show and, in or, and to achieve effects that look greater than the sum of their parts. Uh, you know, hopefully if we hide the things we don't like and show the things we want in a way that is really effective, we get much more bang for our buck. So, you know, that was nice to hear that he really understood the, the nature of the project, that the, the creature transformation is going to have to take place inside of a framework that requires a lot of creativity and creative restraints. One fun detail that we were talking about was that if the creature transforms into a smaller body, there would be a lot of body parts left over in the tub or the vessel that the changeling creature uh, transformed in if his victim or her victim its victim was smaller than it. So I thought that would make a nice after image to the transformation that I didn't think about, uh, showing the tub full of the remnants of what couldn't be reconstituted uh, by the new visage of the Changeling's creature. Uh, one thing we talked about uh, in the vein of showing as little as we can by getting and getting a great effect was a shot that tracking along the floor of our character as the transformation begins and, and seeing pieces of this person fall off like you know an ear you see as his pants fall off you see skin kind of peel with the pants maybe an eyeball falls out maybe teeth are clattering on the onto the tile floor something really just visceral but but being able to demonstrate being able to communicate a lot to the audience that a lot is transforming that and this is really painful without actually having to show all these things in close-ups that would be a prohibitive uh, time-wise and financially. Hair became a topic of discussion. God, this was something I didn't even think about until I was talking about with Zane. If you just do latex without, without you know, wrinkles or whatnot, but also no hair, especially if it's a man transforming, it's going to look really strange. And so we were talking about how, how to overcome uh, the tediousness of, say, of sewing hair into each latex part, or, or what they call punching hair follicles into each latex part, like the eyebrows or the, if there's a mustache or a beard or 
uh, for the head if we do a whole head mold uh, or just even on the fingers, right? So like I've got little, little tiny hairs in my fingers and it's those kinds of details that really sell realism with special effects and visual effects. So that was something we realized was gonna be another massive hill to overcome as this process continues. So that was just something, I don't know, I, was, I, think, I'm, I think I might've been staring at my hands being like, oh shit. A couple of things that were fun during the meeting, he brought out a wound book. I can't remember the name, but it was, I think it's a book that's a reference guide for special effects artists. And the, it's real wounds, like real bullet wounds on real people, uh, dismemberment, extreme sunburns. I mean, you name it. This book was extremely gory. It was like live leak in a book, just the most awful things that could happen to the human body. And uh, we talked about maybe even using animal parts for the transformation. He did mention a film, and I forget what it is now, but he mentioned that this film used a pig shoulder in order to get a, you know, a real tactile effect uh, of skin, I think, being ripped as it was, as it, like something caught it, like a claw or a hook or a knife. And I thought that that would be uh, an excellent way of achieving a very clean, and realistic effect. I sort of imagine no matter how good you are at simulating body parts with various chemicals and molds and whatnot, uh, using real flesh probably has a really impressive and intense effect on camera. Like if you were to if you were to cut open a, a pig shoulder and, and and maybe on a macro shot or in a close up, and you dressed it in the way that it looked. I don't know, you dress it in a way that, that it sort of hid the fact that it was a, that was that it was from a dead pig, you probably would get a really realistic effect of, of, of knife or claws tearing into actual flesh. Lastly, we talked about the steps that we needed to take in order to move forward with the creature transformation and sort of thinking about how we're going to do this with or without a highly experienced special effects supervisor. The first was I need to determine the exact effects that I need to show on camera. I mean, to the, to the number, no improvisation. If it's going to be five effects, those are the five effects that we're gonna achieve. And based around those effects, I need to come up with a shot list. And then based around that shot list, come up with a very detailed step-by-step -step guide, visual guide for the crew to show like, this is the first step of the transformation. This is the next step. And then detailed notes with each storyboard describing the gradual process of transformation, just so that it's very clear to everyone who's coming on board what needs to occur from moment to moment so that there's just no a confusion about what we're attempting to achieve. And as this process continues, Zane is gonna source materials to help solidify the budget and the production so that we know exactly what we need to acquire in order to make these effects happen. And, and finally, Zane is gonna do some testing. He is going to uh, take time out of his day to test some of the effects that we're talking about. I'm gonna have him film those and I will film them with him when the, when the chance arises. But uh, keep an eye out for some fun testing, some gory flesh, tearing, sunburn, skin melting, uh, craziness that we're gonna have here on the channel soon enough. So thank you, Zane, for uh, picking up the slack on that end of things, because I don't know how to do any of this. So thank you uh, for that. And that is the update as of now for Changelings. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.